Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Adam Repos Box, and welcome to the long awaited video on my Vox Rack setup. This is, I'm calling, calling it WVOX Vox Radio. I don't actually do any radio stuff, of course, so it's a really stupid name, but it's basically what they would use in a radio setup is my hardware audio processing rack. I've done a lot of audio processing tutorials in terms of software for, to, for what I used to use, and now I've built a three foot tall hardware rack for processing all of my audio in terms of my desktop recordings with my Electro Voice RE20 here processing it automatically. So all I have to do is hit record and not worry about any sort of audio processing, which makes it better for live streams and increases my efficiency with tutorial production, things like that. Let's get into it. Now a little bit of context, again, I do do some gameplay videos and computer tutorials, things like that, at my desk, which I use the Electro Voice RE20 dynamic broadcast microphone, and then I do co-op gaming videos with my fiance, if you haven't seen that, link to the channel in the description below, and she uses the other Electro Voice mic that I had, the RE320, and we just have them set up running to this via XLR. So let's look at the hardware that's involved. So in terms of actually mounting it all like this, I was afraid this would be a lot bigger or a lot more tedious than it actually is. This is a Griffin 10U rack mount, 19 inches wide, although I do think it expands for actual server mounting, but I'm not sure since it only has mounting points in the front and nothing to like, no rail system or anything like that to keep stuff propped up in the back and it's kind of slanted a little bit. I'm not sure it'd really work for big like server mounting, but for audio racks, it works perfectly. And this was only about like 25 bucks on eBay. Overall on the whole, I only spent about 250 total on this whole project, which may sound like a lot, but for what it is and for getting modern updated versions of this, it's not that expensive at all. And that's the beauty of this, is you're able to build something that the software version would do for a fraction of the price. For example, this is an audio interface that I get sent for review, the RME Baby Babyface Pro. And if I put it up to it, yeah, sure. It's a fraction of the size. This thing costs $700 to $800. I would never buy this for myself, ever. And But it does all of that sort of audio processing in software for itself, and you just hook up your mics and go. Well, that's what I built out of old, like, early 2000s, 90s audio processing hardware and put it together right here. I do want to point out, though, that my mixer that I'm using did cost $350 and when it first came out and now costs about $250. But I did not buy this. This was a gift from the radio station guy that I actually interned for for a couple years and he gave it to me as essentially payment for one of my jobs and so I'm not factoring that into my price but neither necessarily will you need to because while yes the mixer is kind of cool you don't need a mixer that you don't always need a mixer that big in fact the main reason that I use this big mixer is the actual inputs that I'm mixing for example I have my computer input a secondary computer input for Skype or Discord or TeamSpeak, things like that, voice over IP chat, which I actually don't need anymore, so I'll be taking out soon because I've discovered a better way to submix my microphones. And then I have an input from my game consoles, and so I have all of that mixing into one input. So I can hear my computer, I can hear my microphone through the monitoring, and I can hear my game sound from my game consoles all through the same pair of headphones. And you, if you're only using one microphone input, as you can see here, I've my microphone, choose microphone, two extra inputs for testing, and then a wireless dongle for another mic that I'll be reviewing soon, all going into this mixer. If you're just using one mix, one microphone, you could actually set through pretty much what you need with this tiny little USB mixer that only costs 40 bucks. Review on this coming soon, but again, size comparison, 
it's nothing at all. So you don't necessarily need this mixer. That's why I'm not really factoring it into the price. And if you have an audio interface like the ones I've reviewed before, the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, 2i4, iTrack Solo, or if you happen to have an RMB, RME Babyface, anything like that, those will work for you just fine. But let's take a look at the actual rack elements that I've put into here. But first, let's turn this baby on and look at the lights. Bam. You probably can't see much of that at all. Um, I was hoping the EQ would light up like my dad's old stereo EQ did. Um, that was actually for like EQing the music playback, but it doesn't, so that's unfortunate. Um, but then if I, you get playback lights here for the microphones and then that's it. Uh, you can get actual rack mounted like LED indicators for your volume levels that just have little microphones on them that light up audio spectrum graph things based on your microphone inputs, but I ran out of Mac. Uh, mounting space as you can see here my mixer actually goes up above the rails um, and it, it wasn't worth the extra like $50 something like that costs. All right starting at the top well, actually let's start we're gonna start this hardware order in the order of connectivity so I can show you where each thing goes. So first both microphones run in via XLR to this Nady Natty it's N-A-D-Y I don't actually know how it's said Natty Audio P-R-A-8 it is an eight channel preamp. Now, if you've seen my audio interface reviews, you know I've recommended this Cloudlifter CL1 mic activator, which is essentially a preamp for one microphone. Well, I, I didn't actually wanna to have to keep dealing with this and I'd need a second one for choose microphone. So what I did was I got a dedicated rack preamp to start this whole process because the preamps in my actual mixer aren't all that great. So I got a dedicated preamp and it has eight channels, which I'm not going to be able to use but that does give me room for expansion where I can plug a mic into one of these two ports for when I'm doing mic reviews, which is super, super handy. It just run, that will just run the raw audio to the mixer, and then I'll get clean audio in Adobe Audition for mic testing. But the, the microphones run via XLR into this preamp, which brings up the gain, makes it louder, and then runs it into via a TRS 1 4th inch connect, balanced connection to this DBX 231 31-band dual-channel EQ. So mine, my mic runs through the top, and then Shoes mic runs through the bottom for the second channel. And all I have it set to is essentially the EQ that I recommended using in Audacity or Adobe Audition that brings up the low end and the high end just a little bit. And then that runs, again, through 1 4 inch balanced connection to this Alesis 3630 dual-channel compressor and noise gate. Now what this does is adds a compressor to my audio, you know, similar to how I, uh, how I compress it in Adobe Audition or Audacity. It just applies a really good for the price compressor to your audio. So if you already have a preamp or something like that, this is a very, very cheap, I think you can get it for like 30 or 40 bucks on eBay. Very good, very cheap compressor for microphones or instruments. And then it also has a noise gate, so it's gonna automatically like cut off the audio when you're not talking once you play around with the settings. I'll post big images in the website posts and in the description below to my actual settings here, but these are actually pretty basic and pretty standard compression uh, ratios. Like Choose Mic is at four to one, mine's at six to one, and then Threshold Attack and stuff is all pretty standard. And then this runs the 1 4 inch balance connector up here to my mixer. My mic, choose mic, the two extra mics for testing, and then wireless dongle and things like that. And then that all runs to my Bayer Dynamic DT990 600 ohm headphones right here. And then up here in the back, I have a USB connection running to the computer. The USB output is actually pretty quiet, so I don't use that a whole lot. But then I have XLR to three and a half millimeter connection running to my computer as well. One fourth inch running as a sub mix to three and a half millimeter for uh, Skype audio that way. It's a submix on this mixer, which means only my, basically, you know, only things I select go to that secondary mix. So everything runs to the main mix, which I use for streams or to listen to to my headphones. But then the submix is only these two microphones. That way, when I'm on Skype, since Skype runs through here, people aren't hearing themselves echo and loop back and forth. And then I have a secondary output here run into the nothing at the moment, but runs to the RME Babyface just as a digital interface for my testing. And then it's all hooked up via power to this Furman uh, M-8X squared. It's a power conditioner. Now, I'm gonna make a dedicated video about this as I actually get a product sponsorship to help with this, but I have an issue in both when I lived with my parents and here 
where I have a lot of static and hum and hissing that runs through my audio when I'm using these kinds of analog setups. And it's just a subtle buzz or hum or sometimes actual like, it sounds like actual like uh, static. And so to get rid of this, you need to isolate all of your audio gear to their own circuit. Now, since I'm running it, since I'm running some of my audio gear to a computer, this isn't 100% possible because it still interacts with my computer, which is hooked up to my battery backup. And I, you know, even if I did isolate it, it wouldn't do me any good. So I have all of this gear on the rack isolated to this audio, con or this power conditioner, which creates its own isolated circuit for the power, which reduces static coming in from lights or computers or anything else hooked up to the circuit. Um, but then also, you know, keeps a clean, con consistent power amperage given to everything else so that it's cleaner. However, that didn't fully fix my issue. So what I got was a couple of, well, I bought one at first, uh, EB Tech Hum X. They are hum eliminators that actually sit on the outlet. Uh, you, it's only for three pole connector, connectors, so I can't use it with my compressor because it has a big power brick that's only two pole. But for any three prong um, grounded outlets, you can plug this into the outlet and plug the whatever you're plugging in into it, and it basically uses the 60 hertz grounding to eliminate any extra ground loop noise or any static issues and things like that. Works great if you have a couple things hooked up, but I had a lot hooked up, and these things are 50 bucks a pop. So thankfully, they sent me out three more. So I've got one for my mixer, the preamp, the equalizer, and then I've actually got one hooked up on my computer. That way I'm trying, I'm eliminating as much possible static from the circuit as possible, and I seem to be pretty good now. What actually seemed to be the differentiating factor is somehow this USB connection is keeping the ground as clean as possible. I, I, I don't know what's up with that. And then lastly, I use what's called ground loop isolators. I've recommended these time and time again. I will show them on screen. They're little boxes that you hooked up, hook up to 3.5 millimeter connections. So anything running to a computer, or for example, my game console audio comes out of my HDMI switcher is three and a half millimeter. You run that in between your main cable and the actual audio jack, and it eliminates some of that static and ground loop as well, and gets you a lot cleaner audio. But all of this is my new favorite audio setup, and it is serving me quite well. And of course, the mixer itself, I don't think I said this earlier, it's a Behringer Zenix X1832 USB mixer. Pretty freaking awesome. And then, uh, like I said, I got this Griffin rack mount off eBay. You can get some that are carpeted, and they're like a cabinet, or I have a big giant one that's a big rolling cart over under my tripod. I, I literally got it two days after I finished building this. The guy I interned for, I got a couple stuff, I got a, I got some stuff from him, um, a monitor and things like that, and he's like, hey, you want this? I was like, yeah, that would have been useful like a week ago, but I'm going to find a use for it. I think I may set up at some point a secondary audio rack for doing uh, processing on my camera mic audio, or maybe I'll use it for mounting stuff that I review if I get any of this stuff for review, because... I thoroughly enjoy playing around with this hardware. So if I can review on any of it, that would be a blast. So at least this 3630 compressor, badass. Definitely recommend if you already have a preamp. If you don't have a preamp, Natty PRA8 8 channel preamp, you can get it super cheap and it will serve you very, very well. And then great equalizer, although you never, you'll never need 31 bands. I'm not even using all 31. Like probably the middle majority of them are all set to flatline, but very cheap equalizer I got and it's a dual channel for two mics. You can probably get stuff even cheaper if you go one channel, if you're only using one mic. But again, I have two mics that I'm running with here in our studio, and it gives me room for expansion for testing other mics. So I do hope you enjoyed this video on WVOX, Vox Radio, <laughs> or something. Uh, if you liked it, be sure to smash the like button. If you'd like to see more videos like this on this kind of hardware, audio hardware processing, things like that, leave a comment down below. Be sure to subscribe for more awesome tech videos. I'll catch you in the next one.